So this unit is on equilibrium, or this unit, as well as this video, is on equilibrium. We are starting unit 10 right now. Um, and equilibrium can be defined as a balance between opposing forces. Uh, so up to this point, most of the reactions that we've worked with are what you refer to as go to completion reactions, meaning that they will continue until one of the components um, is used up, the limiting reactant is gone, and then the reaction is going to stop. And we've always signified this with a single arrow in the equation. But recently you've started to see reactions with double arrows. Those reactions are referred to as reversible reactions because the reaction can run in both ways. Not only will the reactants create products, but the products can create the reactants that you started with. And so we use the double arrow to show that the reaction will go both ways. Um, and it's these reversible reactions that can establish equilibrium. So there's two types of equilibrium. First type is what we refer to as static equilibrium. Um, so that is really, there's no change occurring. You don't see anything at any level. Even if you could see the atoms, there's nothing happening. And the best example of that would be if you and a friend were on a seesaw at the playground and you said, let's see if we can balance. And so you lift your legs up and you have to kind of scooch in and scooch out a little bit to adjust for size and weight limits and everything, but eventually get to the point where both of you are off the ground. Um, that would be an example of static equilibrium. If you move at all, you're going to knock yourselves out of static equilibrium and then you'll want to somebody will fall to the ground. So a seesaw is an example of static equilibrium. Uh, dynamic equilibrium is the kind of equilibrium we see in chemical reactions. Um, so even though it looks on the outside, when you look at a reaction, it looks like nothing's happening. Um, at a smaller level, at the atomic level, there is a whole lot of change going on. The reactants are going to the products and then the products are going back to the reactants. So like I said, chemical reactions are examples of dynamic equilibrium and this is what we're going to focus on for the rest of the video. So during chemical equilibrium, there's two things that have to be true. Now, these two ideas are going to help you when you go to look at the video for the equilibrium simulation that's going to happen next on your list. So keep these two ideas in mind. The concentration of the reactants and products have to remain constant during chemical equilibrium. So there's no change in concentrations. However, what does have to be equal are the rates of the forward and the reverse reactions. That's what does have to be equal. So the speed at which the forward reaction goes to the reverse and the speed at which the reverse reaction goes to the forward or the reactants go to the products and the products go to the reactants, that's what has to be equal. So concentrations need to stay constant, but rates need to stay equal. So those are two ideas to keep in mind as you move forward. All right, let's get to some quantitative stuff. Um, there is something called the equilibrium constant. Um, and two scientists did a whole lot of work um, studying equilibrium reactions and came to um, this realization about equilibrium expressions. So for a general reaction, 3A plus 2B yields C plus 2D, the men found that at a specific temperature, um, there was a constant relationship if you set up the components of the reaction like this. Okay, so KEQ is the equilibrium expression, and then is a, is a, that's a value. And then here is the, the expression that that constant equals. So what do you see in this equation? Take a look at the reaction and compare what we've done to um, those components, when we put them in the equilibrium expression, what do you notice? So if you want pause, there should be four different things that you pick up on. So pause and see if you can come up with them. So hopefully you noticed a few things. The reactants go into the denominator. The products go into the numerator. These brackets, what do these brackets mean? Do you remember? These brackets stand for concentration. So the components concentrations are what go into the equilibrium expression. 
we're going to multiply the components by each other. And we're going to raise their concentrations to whatever the coefficient from the balanced equation is. So four ideas, reactants on bottom, products on top, concentration of those things multiplied and raised to the power of their coefficients. So it's a lot easier to see all that in an example, but if we were to write it out, here's the idea. The product of the concentrations of the products each raised to a power indicated by its coefficient divided by the product of the concentrations of the reactants each raised to the power indicated by their coefficient is a constant that we call KEQ. Now, this number is going to change for every reaction, just like delta H changed, just like specific heat changed. This constant is going to change from reaction to reaction to reaction. It's also going to change if we do it at a different temperature. For us, most of the time, we're just going to stay at 25 degrees Celsius. So when we talk about KEQ, that's what we're really referring to. But just keep in mind that this number is going to change every time you change something about the chemical reaction, either the temperature or what the actual reaction is. So the constant for the forward reaction is always products divided by reactants. So think about it. If KEQ is greater than one, what does that say about the reaction? Does the equilibrium, when you have equilibrium, do you have more products? or more reactants if, it's, if KEQ is greater than one. Well, hopefully you see in the math that if it's greater than one, the numerator is going to be favored, and so you'll have more products. Likewise, if KEQ is less than one, equilibrium is going to favor the reactants, so you'll have fewer products, more reactants. So KEQ is bigger than one. Think of it as being more than 50% complete. If KEQ is less than one, think of it being as less than 50% complete. Okay, so if KEQ equals one, it means it's it's right, it's sitting right about halfway done. All right, so let's think about this reverse reaction for a minute. Um, if the equilibrium constant is products divided by reactants in the forward, in the reverse, we've got to flip everything, right? So 1 over KEQ is going to be the value of the equilibrium constant in the reverse direction. And how would we write it? We have to write it reactants over products. So for that reaction that we did just a little ways back, it would be 1 over KEQ is equal to, remember that these were, were our products, but now we're doing the reverse, so they act as the reactants. These used to be our reactants, but since we're doing the reverse, they are now our products. That's the only thing that's different. We're flipping the entire expression um, from numerator to denominator. Um, so one really important thing to keep in mind that is that equilibrium constants are relative. It really depends upon how you write the reaction. What if I had, instead of saying 3A plus 2B, had said C plus 2D yields 3A plus 2B, you, we would be talking about the complete inverse of, of everything at this point. So you've got to think about what does the actual reaction make the reactants and the products the way that it's shown. So one last thing, um, remember that the equilibrium expression includes concentration of components. Solids and liquids don't have a changing concentration, their concentration is constant. So you're actually not going to include them in the expression. So when you write an equilibrium expression, those brackets are reminding you that only things that can change concentration go in there. So if you have gases and aqueous solutions, definitely include them. You can change their concentration. But if you have solids and liquids, they do not ever appear in the equilibrium expression. So be careful with that. All right, let's do one practice problem. Um, so here's an example. I've got solid carbon reacting with oxygen gas producing carbon monoxide gas. So first question is, what would the equilibrium expression look like? Can you write that for me? So KEQ equals what? How would you write that expression? And hopefully you come up with this, okay? I've got oxygen, the reactant on the bottom, the product, carbon monoxide on the top, brackets mean concentration, 
coefficient of 2 becomes the exponent. Oxygen doesn't have one, so we don't have to put anything there. Why isn't carbon in there? Hopefully you're recognizing that it's a solid, so it doesn't go into the equilibrium expression. Its concentration does not change, and therefore it's not going to be part of the expression. All right, so let's plug some numbers in. What if oxygen at equilibrium had a concentration of 3 molar and carbon monoxide had a concentration of 2 molar? What would be the actual equilibrium expression or the actual equilibrium value for the constant? We solve that, plugging everything in. Notice that the equilibrium expression is going to have a unit of some expression of molarity. In this case, we had molarity squared on top divided by molarity at the bottom, so a KEQ is just molarity. But what if it had been like molarity to the fifth divided by molarity to the third? Then we'd have molarity squared, okay? So KEQ has a unit always of some expression of molarity. Um, a lot of times we let that unit drop and just actually use the number. Um, but keep in mind, there is a unit to the equilibrium expression. All right, what if we did the reverse reaction? What's KEQ going to be for that? Well, I need to flip it, right? So 1 over KEQ, I'm going to take those numbers from the last slide. The 3 molar now goes on top. The 2 molar squared goes on bottom. And what do I wind up with? 0.75 molar for the reverse reaction. All right, so you've got a little bit of guidance on equilibrium. Um, you've got two choices. You can do some problem sets, or you can go on to the activity that's going to give you a really good, solid understanding of what equilibrium is. Um, I personally am going to encourage you to do the activity before you try the problem sets, but it is entirely up to you. Good luck on whichever one you do.